Just give us an assessment of the market's performance in general today. Any reaction to the MPC decision? Well, I'm a bit, um, I'm a, I'm a bit dubious about um, how the money market rates directly affect the stock markets. Uh, in that um, the big players um, take their decisions mainly, mainly out of the stock markets. I mean, the small players um, are hardly aware of what goes on um, in the uh, rate discussions. So I do not believe that um, the MPC rate has a, re a direct impact, except for the fact that um, the big players, the PFAs, would begin to lay their bets in the government areas. So there's going to be a crowding out, really, of, um, of the private sector and the markets. Let's talk about the results coming through. And let's start with what experts say are disappointing results coming out of Nestle. Turnover at 18%. It's down from the 21% we saw last year this time. Uh, profits after tax at 3.6%. It's just too modest, investors will say. What are the challenges that they've been facing there? Well, the challenges are the challenges that most manufacturing um, experience in this country. Energy rates are still difficult. I mean, en energy is still difficult in the country. And um, the rates of um, uh, the power supply, I mean, diesel, have gone up um, no less than 30, 40 percent. Um, there's also uh, constriction in consumer uh, purchasing power and um, access to the market. That is the route to the market for most of these um, uh, manufacturing companies is um, challenged by problem spots in the country. And um, that also affects the consumer purchasing power. Okay, more positively, there are the results coming out of a tier one bank, First Bank, reporting some pretty good results. Profit after tax up 23%. They've seen an increase in earnings uh, by 14% due to higher yields in interest rates and lending and also just basically the yields on investments improving. What do they get right? Well, it's um, several things. I mean, primarily economies of scale, um, size is a factor, and then there's um, the important factor of um, flights to safety. Most um, investors have chosen to, most um, people who uh, put their monies in banks, have chosen to go to the banks that they consider to be safer. Mm. Um, and um, like the first bank people reported, if you're getting lower deposits and you can lend them at, um, at a, a very good rate, um, your, your, your bottom line will improve. I mean, obviously, we've Economies seen... Economies of scale, basically. Okay, so we've seen their MPL uh, ratios down 3%, so they're not really exposed to prospective defaulters. Um, as you're saying, net income for interest income for First Bank up 53%. What's curious is most of the other Tier 1, Tier 2 banks have generally shown good results, and most of them are lending again, but not at the percentages we're seeing at First Bank. Why that discrepancy? Well, I think I mean for most of, most of the banks in the um, most of the banks in tier one are lending at the same rates as first bank. Maybe it's maybe there's a slight um, um, uh, maybe the performance of first bank on their loans and advances is perhaps maybe 10, 15 percent more mm -hmm. than the other bigger banks like Zenith and GTB. But you must remember that first bank is um, is considerably larger in size than um, some of those banks. You know and um, what, I'm very, what I find very interesting about the First Bank results is that um, they have chosen to become nimble and efficient now. Um, and with the size that they have, if they're able to do non-performing loans in the region of um, Zenith and um, GTB, that's something to um, be happy about. Right. It's remarkable in my view. All right. Now, one of the smaller and rescue banks, FCMB, also came in with uh, first half 2011 results. Increase in earnings per share of about 32 Kobo. That's the price right now. But experts believe we're going to see a flat performance going forward. And we do know this is one of the banks that has just done a, a, an MOU for a merger. It's scheduled to be recapitalized, but not much excitement uh, and expectation for the bank. What's your view? I think uh, there's, a, there's a point of correction there. Yeah. FCMB was not one of the banks. Oh, it's that, um, sorry, fin, it's, got, it's made the bid for FinBank. My apologies, but I'm just yes, saying I this, mean, there's just a general view that it's not going to do well in the midst of all of these M and A's. Well, I mean, um, you need to look at the converse side of what I spoke about about economies of scale. Um, the smaller banks are struggling for market share. Um, you'd see that they maintain what they have, but um, growth is the challenge because. Um, 
take, take, think about the reports of First Bank. They have 600 and over 600 branches. I mean, the smaller banks are looking to improve that scale by the measures that they're going into. But um, for me, I think that um, the real problem is um, integration after the measures and the kind of size you're going to have to manage all of a sudden. Mm. It's good to grow by those measures, but um, there are going to be challenges going forward. I don't think the performance for smaller banks that are growing to assume bigger size would um, impact on the market or impact on their performance um, before 18 to 24 months. Okay, rates uh, of uh, equity at 8.8%. Just a value for an investor in uh, FCMB? I wouldn't want to be too specific about um, what they would get in return, but I'd say that for most of the banks who are growing in size, like I said, 24 months, um, they would be looking to do, uh, with general improvement in the Nigerian economy, return on equity should surpass 8.8%. All right, thanks. I'd so say maybe 12%.